stream chat. Ah, we've got Peggy already in the chat. Good evening to you. Yes, I've got a really, really good life tonight. Very, very good life. Uh, something different. Something different we can talk about this evening, which I think would be very, very, very interesting to de indeed. Uh, I'll give you my reasons why I came up with this subject of the uh, the live stream. Did you see the title of it? The title of the live stream is uh, Billy Moore v. Paul Venice. Uh, now, this isn't, uh, let me start off at the beginning by saying uh, this is in no way any type of clickbait live stream. Because uh, as you would be aware, this channel is a non-monetized channel. We we don't we don't we don't do things on this channel for clicks and views. We don't really we don't really care about the numbers. We have the motto "20 is plenty." We don't really want more than twenty people in the chat at any one time. That is our maximum capacity to busting point. But if we do get more for something like this. Uh, talking about this subject tonight, about uh, the possibility of a boxing match between uh, Billy Moore and Paul Fennis. Now, let me explain to you why I actually picked this as the title of the live stream. We'll see if we can get some people coming to the chat. At the moment, we've only got uh, Peggy at the moment. I'll just check with Peggy that she can hear me okay if she is there. Is the sound okay? Uh, I don't know. She might be in the kitchen doing something <laughs> at the moment. Let's wait till we get a few more people come in the actual chat, in the live stream chat, and I will explain how I come about with this, uh, this topic for tonight's live stream. Oh, terrible weather out there at the moment. It's pouring down with rain pouring down with rain at the moment, but what can we do? Raining cats and dogs. It's raining cats and dogs. We might get some people come through in a moment and I will, uh, I will uh, develop the theme of the live stream. It's very, very interesting. All right, Peggy, can you hear me okay? That's just the main thing. Uh, if you can hear, the, hear me, uh, the sounds okay, that will be the main thing. Because you've got some people just watch it, but they don't come into the live stream chat, and that is fine. That is fine. Uh, just check that the sound is okay, because I had problems with the sound earlier when I done a live stream this morning. Oh, good, loud and clear from Peggy. Thank you, darling, for that uh, that heads up on the sound. The sound, okay. So there's people watching in, but they're not actually in the live stream, but they'll be interested in this topic so what happened is i seen a video um, by a, a fella called billy moore he comes from the city of liverpool very very well famous on uh, youtube and in uh, in media because he done a couple of books i think he wrote two books and uh, they were based on his time uh, in a prison, I don't know if it was uh, Thailand or Philippines. It was one of one of one of them sort of um, uh, countries, and he was, you know, it was about his um, experiences there in the prison, and he got uh, he got involved and taken under the wing, you know, under the wing of s some of the criminals, I suppose, in the prison. That is. Uh, to do some boxing, you know, boxing in the prison, yeah. And apparently, like, if you if you check out, um, you know, these prisons like that are abroad like that, uh, the one he was in, it's like, oh, the conditions are diabolical, diabolical. It's like, um, you know, when you open up a door and there's like, I don't know, there could be about 40 people or 50 people all sprawled about on the deck, on the floors. There's no beds or nothing in these places. You don't even get pillows, sheets, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you, you, I, think you even, I think you're even lucky if you can get a spot to lie down in without, you know, anybody annoying you. 
because it's all crammed like sardines into these prisons. Anyway, he had the story, fantastic story, uh, about his time in uh, abroad there, abroad there, you know, and also his background with, uh, this, was, this was years ago, like, you know, his fights, his fights with Egyptians, you know, addictions um, to substances, and he's conquered that, you know, he's conquered that. And he looks, I'll tell you what, he looks in fantastic condition. I, I, I just watched, I just watched a short video the other day, you know, one of them short videos. And he was like doing this, this sort of training on the bags, you know, these bags. And, and these bags, the training he was doing on these bags, one of them long, you know, like the sort of long bags, if you know what I mean, that hang. Like like quite longish. He was using these these round bags, very 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 big. They were hanging hanging like round bags. Looked really really hard hard the uh, leather stuff. And he was doing some uh, some boxing skills on it, you know, on the bags. And I tell you what, he looked in fantastic condition. Did this guy called Billy Moore. And um, so anyway, to get to, to to get, I'll get there eventually. But so what happened was he done a critique. This is Billy Moore, yeah. Uh, he done a critique on a uh, Paul Venice. You know Paul Venice. Uh, now Paul Venice is another guy who has got a back. He's got a background in K one uh, boxing. I think it is something to do. Look, I'm not an expert here, and I, I, I don't profess to be an expert or anything like that, you know. But all I can see is he has got a very, very outstanding record. I don't think he's actually been beat, you know, like European record uh, in this K1 boxing, you know, K1 boxing. Uh, I think that's to do with kickboxing as well. You know, you can punch and you can kick. Now, uh, yeah, as I say, I, I think he was un he's undefeated. Like, you know, I think he may have... Um, he may have packed it up a few years ago, but now he's 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 got the fire in his belly and he fancies some more bouts, you know, some more bouts, uh, some. But I think it's mainly boxing now, and uh, with a few to making a few, a few, um, a few quid, you know, a bit of cash. Yeah, you don't you don't do you don't do these things for nothing, like right? you know. So um, he had a fight with a guy the other night, and this is when I come to the 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 idea, uh, the idea because I did see some comments elsewhere where people said, "Oh, Billy, Billy, do you fancy having having a you know having a having a boxing match with Paul like that type of thing?" You know, uh, uh, and I was just thinking. So I thought to myself, Billy Moore, yeah. He was in his prison abroad when he, he wrote the book. By the way, check out the books. I think there's two books. If you put in Billy Moore, it will come up on Amazon and all that. You know, the book, the books online. Uh, and I think there was a movie done as well about him. You know, like a movie based on the books. So you're talking about he's got a good background, good background, uh, well known. And then, as I say, he done the critique on Paul Paul Venice fight. Uh, getting back to Paul Venice, I think apart from Paul Venice uh, having an unbeaten record right up to European level, like European level, yeah, he's never been beat. You know, with that K one K K one K one um, kickboxing. I think it's kickboxing. The K might stand for. There could be a clue in that key, couldn't I? <laughs> yeah, key one. Uh, but anyway, he has got an unbeaten record up until European European level. And, and, and then I think what he's done is, as he's got a little bit older, he packed it up. But I don't know, he was doing other things. I think he's got a bit of a background as well. You know, a background in his past uh, of um, maybe sort of overindulgence in, uh, what do you call that? Uh, recreational substances. We will use we will use that word, recreational substances. But he's he's seen the light, isn't he? You know, he's like reformed. 
he's reformed and he is on a good path. Like, he's on a good path. I mean, the other guy, Billy Moore, he has been on a good path. Like, I'm talking about uh, reformed from any sort of substance, uh, recreational substances or alcohol even uh, for years, you know, for, for, for a good few years. And uh, I think Paul, he, 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 he's, on, he's on the road to, uh, you, you know, recovery. I mean, I don't know how long it is since, how long his... Uh, his uh, his dabbling, sh shall we say, with uh, recreational substances was, but he's he's he's, he's back on 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 point, back on the, the the path. He's on the path of fitness and recovery. So basically, we see a bit about the background of these two guys. Now, this guy Billy Moore, because he was in prison in. Uh, I don't know which exactly country it was. I think it might have been Thailand or whatever. Uh, one of the type of countries like that, yeah? And he was doing the boxing out there, but he was also, I think, doing a bit of that kickboxing, you know, because that's what they do out there. Do you know what I mean? That is the, the, the national sport, even in the prisons, you know, like the prisons. Uh, and uh, so, so it's interesting that, Billy Moore has actually done a bit of that, you know, the kickboxing, but in the prisons in, 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 we'll just say Thailand. I don't know if that was the actual country, but I think it might have been, yeah. Yeah, Thailand, I think. And uh, I think he might have been in this, this, this prison called the Hotel Hilton or something. You know, there's a nickname for it. Is that in Thailand? Uh, anyway, let's forget about that. Like, So basically... When he was there, he was doing a bit of the kickboxing as well. And it's funny that Paul Paul Venice has got an unbeaten record as K1 up to European level in kickboxing. So, But we put the kickboxing element of that aside. Look, people, and I mean, I think Billy Moore is around about 51, I think he mentioned in a video. I hope I do get that correct. If, if, if it's not and it's... It's, it's incorrect. I do apologise in advance. I don't know what age exactly Paul is. I think Paul's a bit younger. You know, like Paul Venice is a bit younger. <coughs> but it's not a lot, like a loads of, uh, you know, years and years like apart. And like getting to getting to the crux of the matter. Why did why did I do this 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 title? Um, Billy Moore versus Paul Venice. Well. As a result of the the, uh, the little video that Billy Moore done about the Paul Venice fight, which was a little critique, you know, analysis, and it was done very, very respectful. I must add, very, very respectful. It was, it was really, you know, just giving you a, a a analysis, you know, of the fight, and. Uh, and it's done in a very, very respectful manner. And um, and I think it was quite a good analysis of the fight. And I think Paul Venice um, actually commented back to Billy Moore in, in, in a comment somewhere, somewhere or another. And he said, thanks for the, you know, thank, I, I can't remember the exact words verbatim, but it was something along the lines of, thanks very much for the, the you know, the feedback or whatever. And, and 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 both people are very very respectable, uh, you know. When it comes to 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 boxing and all that. Oh, good evening to the wonderful Karina. Hope you're well, darling, and everything is good in the hood. Yeah, these two guys are of a how can I put it? They're of the old school, but they're no ancient, right? They're old school in so much that they when they are fighting. Uh, true warriors, you know, true warriors, like they are respectful to each other. Respect. I'm not. I'm not saying they are going to fight each other, but I'm saying they are the type of guys that they they don't go in for all this, this, uh, you know, all this uh, talk. You know that. I, I I forget what you call it, but you know when it, when you know when these people are all hyping up something. And they're chatting a load of, uh, I don't like to use profanities, but they're chatting. <laughs> it begins with S, 
H I T. <laughs> They're not like that. These two guys, these two guys are like old school, um, uh, respectable, and they are true warriors. And true warriors don't go in for all that sort of stuff. They'd be very, very respectful uh, towards each other. And I, I think myself like that. This, if they were to have a boxing match, yeah, have a boxing match. I think it would be, you know, I'm talking about on the YouTube, YouTube wise, amongst like this YouTube community corner, whatever, and all these parts of YouTube. But 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 this uh, boxing and all that have got got big big uh, followings on YouTube. I'm talking about it's a big thing on YouTube, and I think that Billy Moore versus Paul Venice. Uh, I think also Paul Verlet Venice uh, was, I don't know if he's done a part, he's acted the part of a guy in a movie or he was going to act the part of a guy in a movie or something like that. So you've got, you've got, you've got um, Billy Moore who has wrote his two books and he's had a movie made about his life story. And then you've got the thing about the movies I am sure that Paul Venice has been mentioned in something to do with a movie, with a guy. I don't know this guy, but he's he's sort of a well-known, or sorry, he was a well-known figure in uh, the Newcastle, you know, the, the, sorry, I don't know if it's Newcastle, but the North East called Lee Duffy. He's, got, he's quite a well, a well-known uh, person, like, Guy and he, he's no longer with us. Rest in peace. But there was apparently there was talk of a movie getting made about him, uh, or or maybe it has already been made. But there was talk about Paul Venice would be playing the part in it. I think playing the part of the guy called Lee Duffy. Now I don't know if this movie has already happened, or it was going to happen, or it hasn't yet happened. You know, but he was mentioned in that that light. So that's the connection between the movies. Uh, you've got Billy Moore. He's got his movie. And then you had Paul Fennis either has already starred in the move, movie or the movie is yet to be made, but he's lined up for the part. That's what This is what I heard anyway. Uh, we'll have to wait and see about that. And uh, yeah, Peggy's got the thing here. Uh, the name of the guy, Lee Duffy. He must be quite well known, this guy Lee Duffy, you know. So anyway, we get back to it now. I thought to myself, like, right, I seen this guy, you know this guy Billy Moore? He done a little video, uh, short video. The one I was just, I know I went off on a tangent there, but he was in with these bags hanging, you know, like bag work, bag work in a gym. And I tell you what, I was watching him doing this bag bag work, you know, punching the bags and that. And I thought, poor oh, blooming hell, this guy is, he's, he, he, you know, he's a business. He's a business, you know. It just just from what what I'm looking, you know, what I see, I'm thinking this is this is this, this guy's no tickling any bags, right? And he's no going over the top. It's like it was like a controlled, you know, controlled jab hook and all that it's, it, and, it, and it wasn't just done for the camera you know you get these people to do bag work and they, they think I'll just do this and that for the camera it, it, it looks like he could have he could have been he could have done this for quite a considerable amount of time but the actual jab and all that oh blooming hell it was fantastic to watch very very skilled controlled boxer from what I can see because I I've been hearing, I've been hearing he has got quite a bit of a background in boxing. He may not have done a lot of actual uh, bouts over his uh, lifetime or whatever, but I think he has always been, how can I put it, he's probably got a natural propensity to boxing. Uh, he's got, the, you know, the, the, the skills and abilities and he looks very, very, very skillful indeed to me, does Billy Moore. Um, I did see, see Paul Venice. Yeah, Paul Venice is, see, I watched, when I watched Paul the other, the other, the other night, you know, his fight against that guy, which, which he done the job and he done the number, he done the number on the guy. You could see that 
probably because he was getting back on uh, back in back in the ring. You know, back in the ring. This is boxing this time, and it it wasn't K one. It was just like the boxing, which is good. And uh, you could see there, there was one thing I did detect from him, which was very very good. I will say very very good. Uh, he is a very good. Uh, he's got a very good guard. You know, when he's he's guarding he, the guy. Look, I don't think the guy really lead lead. You know, don't get me wrong. This guy he was fighting was swinging the punches and that. The guy, the guy, that guy, like he got beat, but he went into the ring, and he had a go. You know, Paul Venice's opponent. It's just that, like Paul Venice comfortably dispatched him. If I could use that terminology, yeah, he he comfortably dispatched them. Like, uh, th 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 as I say, I was very very impressed with uh, Paul Venice's guard. You know, he, he you know, he, I don't think the guy, I don't think the guy laid a glove on his sort of, you know, his head, head or that, or his face or whatever. Very 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 uh, well guarded boxer. Yeah, very well guarded boxer. I see he is a come forward boxer. You know, Paul Venice, his style, his style is a come forward. Um, as with Billy, Billy Moore, his style, just from what I've seen on the bag work, etc., he is a sort of a, how can I put it? You know, one of these boxers that he don't go steaming in, he sets the trap. He sets the trap. You know, he lets them come on to the punches. He could, he would let them come on to the punches. And he's very, 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 very skillful. Um, I mean, this fight, if it could be made, like, you know, the fight, I think it would be fantastic. I think all these people have been on YouTube. I, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, don't get me wrong, you know, like the Jake Pauls and the big, big fights and all that. But I'm talking about just in this, the sort of the the, the the general YouTube, like the general YouTube's got big following uh, of boxing and all that. That's quite, you know, thousands of people will, will watch it. And I think, like, uh, I think this fight is going to be one, well, I see it's, it's, it's going to be, uh, we don't know if it will ever happen. If it was to be made like the, 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 the match, you know, the fight, Boxing match, fight, whatever you want to call it. It would be boxing, wouldn't it, between uh, Billy Moore and Paul Venice. They don't, they don't, look, they don't want to get in the ring and start kicking and all that. You know, like the kickboxing. You know, I'm not trying to be funny, but uh, it's no good. I mean, I'm just saying it's no good for your legs, et cetera, et cetera. But I think it, once you get your certain age, hang on, I'm just going to have a sip of my coffee, people. Hang on. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, once you get to a certain age, like, although Paul Venice has done all that kickboxing, yeah, Paul, for a bit, uh, I think he's won over 40-odd bouts or whatever it was, and he's he's undefeated K1 at European level. But even, I think Paul knows that the way to go now is just the boxing in it. Do you know what I mean? At the time of his life and in the time of Billy Moore's, I think... I think a three minute, uh, sorry, three three minute rounds or something of boxing or whatever. It, would, it wouldn't be a, a long, long boxing match. I don't think. I don't. I don't know. The two of them would have to agree. Um, you know, agree the rules of the fight. You know, agree the rules. Maybe, maybe they go like six rounds. I don't. I don't know. Like, see, these guys are of a superior level. These are of, are of a superior level. They're not like the usual YouTube, uh, you know, like the YouTube um, uh, boxers or fights that are, you know what I mean? Like they, they, this fight, I, I'm, I'm so excited about it because after, I, I, when I seen that guy on the bag, you know, that Billy Moore, like I thought this guy, like he is good. He's good. And also when I think of Paul Venice, his record is outstanding. You know, his record is outstanding to date. He's good, he's good as well. He's got the credentials. You know, the credentials. Yeah, he has got the credentials 100%. I mean, 
the great thing about it is, is I think that this fight would be a good fight. I just, I, I just, I know, I've, I mean, I've not got a crystal ball or anything, but I think it would be a brilliant fight. I mean, I don't know how it would go. I, I, I wouldn't even uh, dare to make any predictions because I, I don't really know, you know, uh, how can I put it? I don't know. See, I think Billy Moore, like, although he's got all the skills and everything, you know, the skills from what I've seen, I think he is an unknown, an unknown, uh, try to think of the word for it, well, an unknown. I don't think he's actually done a lot of boxing. I mean, I mean, I could be wrong here. I should, I should probably have done a, a bit, a little, a little bit more research. But I think, uh, put it this way, Billy Moore has uh, been. He, he's he's got the natural boxing ability. He, he does the boxing training. I think he just does it to keep fit as well. He's been doing it for years. Do you know what I mean? Every now and again, he puts the, back, uh, the, the gloves on and all that and and uh, what have you. Uh, and it would be a fantastic uh, match, a fantastic match. Uh, what I was I was saying, like, what, 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 what I would do on behalf of the, uh, aut the Autism Defence League, yeah, you know, our campaigning group, if, if they arrange the fight, yeah, you know, the, the, the match, if it does happen, uh, whatever they do, like uh, if it happens anyway, what 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 we would do is we we we, we would uh, when I say we that is me, the 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 autism defence league would donate fifty pound to each each of their uh, autism charity of their choice. So if the fight happens, yeah, on completion of the fight, uh. Each of their charity will get fifty pound each, with, with the, the named charities that they name. Uh, that's just that's just from from uh, this channel, uh, from our campaign. Yeah, the Autism Defence League campaign. We yeah, because I think they've both got connections with um, autism. You know, like and that they've got they've got they've got connections, like you know. Uh, so that is that was that is the thing. See, the thing is, if they have a boxing match as well, look, this is going to be a big match, uh, a big boxing match, which will raise a lot of funds and all that. Raise a lot of funds. What they could do is they could. They, this is just a suggestion, right? I, I'm 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 not a I'm not a would you call it an events organizer or anything, but they could just do a one on one. You know, like a one on one. Yeah, arrange a venue, you know, like a bo boxing venue. Yeah, boxing venue. Uh, they could have, say, six rounds or whatever. Uh, sell tickets, do things online, pay-per-view and all that. And then they could split the, 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 the proceeds between themselves. You know, I'm talking about they could actually make some cash for themselves. Yeah, because they, they, they don't want to be fighting in the boxing ring for nothing, in it. They, they, they've got to earn a living, you know, make some money out of it. Uh, the thing I'm just talking about the, the Autism Defence uh, League making £50 donations to each one's charity of their choice to uh, an autism charity is just uh, something we, we would do, but but with, but with them. Their actual fight doesn't even really need to be for like charity or anything. They can just have the fight, and uh, uh, and they split they split the purse. You know, like they they they, 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 they keep the money for for themselves for for, for getting in the ring and uh, having the boxing match. That's what they do. They keep the money. What they could do is, but they could put out. It would be good publicity for autism charities. Like, like you know, they could put signs up at the, uh, you know, the, at the event. Uh, if anybody wants to 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 donate to uh, in the name of the charities, people people would donate directly to charities. Do you know what I mean? To the autism charities, but the actual fight. 
they would be fighting for their uh, each other, and they would keep the, they would keep the cash and split it between them. It's just yeah, they've got to earn their living, earn the living, and they would get the cash. So that is the, the, the charity thing is just a separate thing. You know what I mean? Like that's nothing to do with the actual fight. It's 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 just that the charities would get publicity. So so Billy Moore would pick his charity, whatever charity it is, yeah. And uh, Paul Venice would pick his charity, and they would have signs, you know, signs at the event and all that. Uh, when it's online, they would have signs online if it was on pay per view. Saying, um, you know, if you want to make a donation to a, an autism charity, for example, donate directly to that charity. You know, no, they, 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 the money don't go through them. It would, you would just get a link or something of the name of the charity and you just make a donation to the charity yeah but they would just be fighting slowly for the 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 cash um for actually getting in the boxing ring and having a boxing match you know what i mean like doing all the training preparations getting in the boxing ring and i think it would be brilliant i think it would be brilliant like yeah Absolutely marvellous. So what do you think of that, people? Good idea. I think it's I, I think it's brilliant. It's great that you've got all these uh how can I put it? You know all these little things like when you look at the, the story of both of them, there's some com common common ground there, isn't there? You know, with that that, that Billy Moore when he was in the the the, the tri the tri prison. And they were they were doing all that kickboxing out there, and it strange how he was he was doing a bit of that kickboxing, and now we have Paul Venice, who was a K one uh, boxer, unbeaten record for I think it was forty odd fights. I don't know if it's forty seven or something or forty odd fights up to European level. And that is a great achievement. So you've got two guys, very respectful guys, uh, when it comes to uh, fighting in rings. Very, very respectful, and they keep it real. And we think it would be a great, great, well, I think it would be brilliant, brilliant if they could make the boxing match happen. If the boxing match happens, yeah, let, let me put it this way. If the boxing match happens, uh, uh, they both a charity of each of their choice, autism charity, yeah. If they pick one each, uh, the Autism Defence League, yeah, that's from this channel, will get, make two £50 donations, one to each charity. No problem at all. That is on the condition that the fight actually happens. So this is, this is, this is, this is you know, the fight must happen, yeah. And that is our sort of little commitment and incentive. You know, you know what I mean? Like when I say incentive, the incentive isn't really going to be make a personal effect on them like their, their own uh, pocket or anything. This these two fifty pound donations would go straight to the charities uh on completion of the fight. Yeah, on completion of the fight. And I would put up the um the receipts from the charities that we, that is we, I, the Autism Defence League, have paid what we said we would pay, £50 to each charity on completion of the fight between Billy Moore and Paul Venice. Yeah, that would be a cracking fight. Oh, yeah, good evening to Paul C. Fantastic. Uh, DJ, mixer, record mixer, music man, fantastic. Get across and please uh, subscribe to Paul C's channel. Yeah, you know, Paul, actually, I think Paul comes from, uh, hang on, I've got to have another sip of coffee. Bear with me, people, bear with me. I've got a nice cup of coffee here. <laughs> bear with me, I've got a nice wee cup of coffee. Hang on.
Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think Paul, see, uh, coincidentally, I think Paul is down in Middlesbrough somewhere. I, I might, I might know, I might be wrong there, but I think I might be right. I think Paul C is. Oh, sorry about that, Paul. Oh no, I think he comes from. Uh, hang on, what is it? Uh, Newcastle. <laughs> oh, God, what's happening with this YouTube? It's crazy at the minute, isn't it? It's absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> I think I think I've discussed enough of the uh, what do you call it of the. Uh, <laughs> Paul's having a laugh with me there, I think. But I don't know. I thought, oh, what have I said, man? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. There's no danger. Here, yeah, you know that place? This is the place Paul Venice said is one of the hardest places. I don't know if it's the hardest place in Britain or something. You know, Paul Venice, he said this place called South Bank. You know, you ever heard of this, this South Bank, uh, Paul? I'm talking about Paul C here. If, if, he, if, he's, if he knows that, that part of the land, this place called South Bank. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's supposed to be quite a hard place, I think, the South Bank. You know that South Bank? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he knows about the South Bank. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind this up now. So I'm going to go and have some, some tea. Yes, man does not live by bread alone. Yeah. I'm going to go. I've got something nice already cooked. It's it's out there. <coughs> Pardon me. It's actually cooked, but it's in the fridge at the moment. Oh, yeah. Chris, yeah, Chris knows a bit. Do you know this? Is Chris feel up that way as well? Like, uh, uh, Paul, Paul Fennis, you know, Paul Fennis, he thinks it's, 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 it's really hard up there. You know, the South Bank. You know what I mean? Like, that South Bank. We've got a South Bank, yeah, you know, just on the, the River Thames. It's, it's not too far away from me, actually. I can get there probably in about, hang on a minute, 10. Say 20, 20 minutes walk, 25 minutes, I could, no, probably 25. I could fast walk, I could get to the South Bank by the River Thames. And that South Bank on the River Thames is oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's not like your South Bank in Middlesbrough. Yeah, which is, yeah, very, it sounds very dangerous in the hard area, the South Bank of Middlesbrough. <laughs> Maybe we should do a live one night and we'll, we'll look for, you know, people who think they, they come from the hardest areas or something. The hardest areas. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a funny one, huh, wouldn't it? Who the, hard, the hardest areas. I don't want, look, I'll tell you what, I, I wouldn't want to live in, would you call it? Oh, hang on, Chris says. South Bank in Borough is uncool to have windows. Was that because they're all getting smashed or something? Huh? Flat me, the old man are always getting smashed in the, the thing, like. Yeah. I tell you what, but look, I'm not trying to be funny, but it's no good when you live in an area that's no when I, I don't mean rough, but you know when you've got a like um uh how can I put it? You know, there's no really. <laughs> this will make you laugh. Now, hang on, I'll, I'll just I'll just go into something before the before the end of the live ends. But you you, look, you don't want to live in an area where you've got like all uh, aggravation, do you? You know, you've got yobs all hanging about in the street, drinking, uh, being loud, being shouting, swearing, offensive. You know, like rough area, no respect or anything. You don't, you don't want that. Well, I, I wouldn't want that. What I would want, I would want a Sophia 
clamped down with law and order if that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening to the old school, Pete. Hope you're doing well, Pete. Hope you're doing well. I don't know if there's a live started somewhere because all the numbers just went down. I don't know if somebody's had started up a live. You know, maybe some popular some popular person started up a live stream in it. You can tell that. It's like a thermometer. You know, if you look, I had a bit, I don't know, I had about six people or eight people, and then it just goes wallop. You think, hang on a minute, who's on the other channel? Is it Elvis Presley? <laughs> Elvis Presley has left the building. Yeah, look, you don't want, see these rough areas, what you want is that, uh, rough areas you need to clamp down with law and order, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like law and order. Bring back the old school. I say bring back the old school uh, copper. You know, the old copper on the beat bring back the old school copper on the beat yeah and just update their equipment uh heavier harder truncheon and also uh cs gas spray and uh and of course uh taser taser yeah <laughs> Go you have Law and Order. <laughs> Law and Order is the name of the game. I don't know whether we should change the name of the channel. Uh, yeah, good good evening to Gareth Barrow. Hope you're doing well, sir. Hope all is well wherever you live, mate. Hope it isn't a rough area. We were just talking about rough, hard areas. Yeah, we think, well, I think we should clamp down in these areas. If, if the people are getting disturbed by disturbance of the peace, uh, feral youth drinking, uh, swearing, making noise, uh, criminal damage and all that in the area, then I think there should be a major clamp down by the police. Yeah? Send the police in with uh, taser, CS gas, uh, batons and uh, water cannons. Get them into these areas and get law and order back. I think we might change the name of this channel, yeah? I think the time has come. We might have to think about changing the name of the channel. I think I like the law and order theme. You know, the law and order theme. We might call this channel, I think I'm thinking we call this channel The Sweeney. The Sweeney, yeah? You'll get used to it after a while. The Sweeney, you know, after the, the Sweeney, Sweeney Todd, the flying squad. We call it, might call it the Sweeney. Oh, good evening to Lucifer. Hope you're doing well, sir. Yeah, Lucifer's in the chat. Big up, Lucifer. Yeah, we might call it the Sweeney, I think. Aye, sounds good, doesn't it? The, the Sweeney. And then I will change my my uh, my uh, picture to, uh, to Jack Regan. Remember Jack Regan? Yeah, flying squad, the Sweeney. Yes. Might do it. We'll think it up. Well, I've also might change the, the channel to something a bit more, something a bit more stern. What about, uh, hang on, what about the Old Bailey? Old Bailey. You know, the court, the famous court, we could call the channel the Old Bailey. We could come down heavy with sentences, you know, for the criminals, uh, especially for the petty criminals, YouTube criminals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, come down heavy with the wrath of law and order for the petty YouTube criminals. We could call the channel the Old Bailey, or we could call it, uh, we could just call it the Police Channel. The Police Channel? The Police Channel? I don't know. How about, uh, instead of Dixon, you remember Dixon of Doc Green? Uh, some of you are too young for that. You won't know who Dixon or Doc Green is. Dixon or Doc Green was an old uh, black and white uh, serial with uh, Jack Warner. He was Dixon, uh, uh, Sergeant Dixon or Dixon, I forget what he is. He was PC Dixon, yeah, of Dixon of Doc Green. Doc Green was the area and he was Dixon of Doc Green. 
Uh, we might change it. I'll just call it Jockney of Dot Green, yeah? Jockney of Dot Green. And I'll get, see if we can get yourself a police hat or something for a picture. And we will be we will be in the Law and Order channel. The Law and Order channel. Yeah. That is the name of the game. I'm going to be doing another live about Law and Order. You know, YouTube stalkers and law breakers. Yeah, that's coming up soon. Real soon because there's updates on that. There's updates on that, yeah. Might I might actually do it tomorrow, yeah. Uh maybe tomorrow we will do the one on you YouTube stalkers and lawbreakers, an update. Because the wrath of the law and the court system and the sentences met out with the judge are going to be very, very high, very, very high according to the tariffs. According to the tariffs. Do you know what I mean, like? Yep. Yeah. yeah, there's some people out there, some people out there. Hang on, let me have another sip of coffee. Another sip of coffee. Oh, that's nice. There's a lot of people out there. I don't know if they still do, you know, on the TV and that, they used to do porridge in the prisons. So there's quite a few people out there, YouTube stalkers and lawbreakers. The numbers are up. The total number is six. Two that have, uh, two that were stalking me, but we put them to one side and put them in a box. Uh, they've been dealt with separately as a separate investigation by the, the police investigators. The detectives are on a case of those two. They're getting dealt with. They're nearly coming to a conclusion. But there is four outstanding general, general YouTube stalkers and lawbreakers that are facing the wraths of the courts. Yes, by their own words, by their own words, they say they are going to do things on YouTube live streams. They then go off YouTube and actually carry out what they were saying they were going to do on a live stream. Off the live stream, they actually go to uh, locations and do the criminal offences. And then they go back onto YouTube on live streams and just say, you know what I said on the live stream? Well, we went off the live stream and done what we said we were going to do. And we're now back saying, yes, we done it. We are guilty by our own mouth and words. This is this is this is the crazy people. The people who got lost and drunk on the euphoria of YouTube drama and thought that they could say and do anything they want on YouTube. But some of them uh, push the envelope, push the envelope, got got to the edge and actually stepped over the parapet and actually carried out acts of criminality off YouTube. And there is four. I've, I mean, I've only got my finger on the pulse. I haven't got psychic uh, psychic abilities or a crystal ball, but the four are facing very, very long uh, prison sentences. The tariffs are shown. The tariffs are shown for these four uh, YouTube stalkers and lawbreakers. These YouTube stalkers and lawbreakers, the tariffs are shown sentences, minimums, minimums, six years. Uh, that's, for, that's for a guilty plea. And if they plead not guilty and go to trial, yeah, and are found guilty, subsequently found guilty, they will not receive the six years they could have got for putting their hands up and uh, pleading guilty to the to the crimes. They will receive eight years, eight years a piece. That is what the that is what the tariffs are saying. Yeah, the tariffs. Just check out the check out the law society. Yeah. Uh, the directive given as a result of the new uh, cyber crime, cyber crime policies uh, to the judge, to the judges, and you will see the tariffs and the tariffs that are looking for the four, four 
YouTube stalkers and lawbreakers for guilty pleas they will cop a six each for not guilty pleas if subsequently found guilty they are in line for an eight stretch each eight years each in the prison yes you know what i mean like plenty of time in there to do some studying or something or getting fit you're getting fit in the gym and studying all right what i'm going to do people is we will do the law and order one soon the law and order one soon but anyway let's hope yeah thank you lucifer have a great evening mate yeah uh, say hello to marion for me yeah hope she's well yeah thank you very much lucifer have a good night mate uh what we'll do is i will say good night yeah i will do the next live probably tomorrow yeah uh I'll update you on uh, the, the reporting of a crime. It's coming up soon. I'll update you on that. But in the meantime, have a great evening. Yeah, have a great evening. Be lucky and stay blessed. Catch you later. My people, my people. Bye for now. Bye.